get started with Xamarin Native. Uh, so it, first of all, I'm going to start with creating the Git repository so I can put all my files in it. So I'm just going to go to GitHub Desktop, say File New Repository, and then I'm going to say Getting Started uh, Xamarin Native. I've already done that, but I just say, you know, create repository, make sure it's in the right directory. And then if you see in my finder, I'm just going to go to it. So it's GitHub and Xamarin Native getting started. So this is what it looks like right now. Then I'm going to go into my Visual Studio. I'm going to say new. And over here, it's a little tricky because earlier there was a Xamarin Native option, but it's not there anymore. So I'm going to start with a iOS app, so single view app. I'm going to name it Getting Started. And that's the app name. OK, and I'm going to make it target 14.0 just so we have more people able to download. Um, and then I'm going to say next. Getting started is the name of the solution, but the name of the project is getting started.ios. So make sure that you look at that. You see that? And this is what it would kind of look like. So that's a nice preview there. I'm going to change that location to what, where I want it to be. So it was my GitHub and Xamarin Native. So this is where I wanted to stay. And it's going to create a project. And that's it. That looks good. So as you notice, it created that little directory there. And you know, it has the iOS project, it has a solution. So stuff is basically populating it has 27 files. So now I'm going to add my Android project. So in the meantime, while I add my Android project, I can just go ahead and build it to see what it looks like. And so add new project, I'm going to say Android app, Android app, say next. Uh, over here, again, I'm going to say the name of the app is the same, getting started, latest and greatest, so that it uses Android X. And then I'm going to say next. The project name is getting started.android, <clears throat> just like it was for iOS.iOS. .iOS. It's the right location. So that looks fine. Say create. As you can see over here uh, on iOS, it did go ahead and build that blank project, which is just a blank screen. In a little bit, we're going to actually make changes to it. So I'm going to hit stop. And I just added my Android project. So I'm going to test my Android project as well. Um, let's see, getting started there. What is this? OK, for some reason, it's you know it just doesn't let me select my configuration properly yet. We can make that change later. But for now, I'm just going to select. I hooked up my Android device. And I'm going to open up Visor so I can look at my Android device on my screen. So it's hooked up. You know, I enable debugging. And then I'm going to hit the Play button. While it's building, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, so there is, obviously, you see some issues over here. So I'm just going to say. Um, go ahead and restore NuGet packages. So these are just the libraries that are needed in order to build. And uh, let's just hit play and see if it works now. Oh, 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 oh wait, again, it shows Android, I mean, iOS for some reason. So I'm going to hit stop. Uh, I'm just going to disable this one for now. So I'm going to say unload. So it's still there but it's just unloaded for now. So I'm just going to unload that. I'm going to say Android. In the meantime, while it tries to build this, ah, yeah, this is another issue that I noticed also in the blank project. So uh, this is like some Xamarin code that you know we don't really need. It just handles permission. It's kind of fancy, not needed. So I comment that out, and then I hit the play button. And in the meantime, I'm going to add a the shared project. So um, Xamarin Native was created in order to, one, uh, there are two main reasons. One is to use C Sharp in order to build these native applications. The second one was so that we can share some code between the two iOS and Android projects, usually some business logic. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to select multi-platform library, .NET standard library. Or I can just you know choose this one. So either one, but .NET, oh, it closed it automatically. OK. Add 
new project. I'm going to create a .NET standard library because that's the most um, compatible one with all these fancy NuGet packages out there. So .NET standard, you can select .NET standard 2.1, that's fine. So over here, the project name, you can just name it getting started, or you can name it getting started.core, getting started.shared. Like there's so many different naming conventions, all of them are fine. I'm just going to call it .core. As you can see over here, when I press the play button for the for the Android project, it went ahead and it actually built that blank template. Okay, and what we need to do now is we need to add a reference to this core project in our Android project. So I'm just going to right click on references, say add a reference, go to projects, select that core project. So in this core project, what I'm going to do just to show that it actually works in the um, in the constructor of this class, I'm going to add a console.writeline. So just a simple console write line that will print out uh, my name, for example, you know, so it can do some certain work, like it can return uh, the tip value and all that, all this different kinds of work, but we're just trying to see if to see if it works. So on this on click function of this, I'm going to add that console. Uh, I'm going to add that reference over here. So I'm just going to say var uh, c equals getting started dot. Uh, oh, class one. Is it public? Yes. Let's see. Class one. Oh, new class one because it's obviously it's not a static class. So it seems like it's not connected. What is the reason? Mm. Namespace getting started. Doc. Oh, dot core. Yeah. So the name of the project, uh, the, the namespace is dot core. So that's how you essentially reference it. So you can either reference it like this, or you can say, um, you know, obviously using um, getting started dot core. And then once you do that, then you can just go like that new class one. Okay, so what we want to see now we're going to stop it and start it again, what we want to see is that a um, it should appear in the application output as soon as it loads. So one thing to note is that this over here is the main activity. So if you uh, I don't think it's using Android. At, oh, yeah, it is using Android X. Okay, but in Android, where do you make the changes to your layout? So the layout is obviously in your resources layout folder. So this is your main activity. So in Android, usually you'll have one activity and you'll have multiple fragments for your views. Um, and so over here, it's just going to load so you can see it a little better. It, this over here is your preview. So just like Android Studio, you have a preview over here that shows like all the different elements. So over here, you'll notice this floating action button. And you know, it has an ID, that's how it's referenced in the activity. And like just your app bar, your toolbar, and then this is your main content. So uh, your main content is over here where it says Hello World. So notice how if I change this to Hello Worlds, when I stop and I start it again, it should show Hello Worlds over here. Uh, but we, we were trying to test to, to make sure, see this is your preview, and notice how you know whatever you change over here, it shows up in your preview as well. But uh, when you click on your mail button, it says Somer. So where does that Somer come from? It comes from your shared project. So that's essentially how it works. Uh, you know, Android in general. So you, you guys have, you know, done a deep dive into Android. Um, I'm just going to switch over to iOS now. So going back here, I'm going to reload the iOS project and I'm going to unload the Android project. Let's see. Do I need to stop iOS and notice how this became the main project. And then, you know, I can just select whatever simulator, as you guys know. Uh, so over here in Android, in iOS, how do I make changes? So in iOS uses the main storyboard, if you know, uh, of um, 
if you know of uh, iOS native development, you use everything in a storyboard or a zip file. So this is your storyboard. As you can see, the view controller or the page has nothing right now because it was blank. And I'm going to press that plus sign. I'm going to drag and drop a, a label. I'm going to have it say Sommer. And in addition to that, what I'm going to do is in the view controller view did load function. So as soon as the page loads, uh, it performs some functionality. And over here, I'm going to make it uh, say var c equals. I'm going to oh first of all, I got to add the reference to the core project. So add a reference projects core. Say okay. Now I'm going to add that you I'll be able to now add that using statement so dot core yep so okay notice how we added summer make sure you hit save I'm just gonna quit Visual Studio I mean quit Xcode now go back here and just I'm gonna say class one new class one because it's not a static function so and it it's going to go back and it's going to run this console right line statement and Let's go here, so iOS simulator, iPhone 8. And let's see, why is there an error there? Um, we might have to unload Android again. Ooh, where is this missing semicolon? Ah, here. <sighs> Not used to semicolons anymore. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, so as soon as it creates this object, class one, it's going to run the constructor, obviously, and it's going to call this console right line statement. And so we should see, as you can see over here, as soon as it appeared, as soon as it loaded the page, it ran that console right line statement. And it also had that text that we added in the, um, that we added in our storyboard. Yeah. So anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to learn more, please let me know. Um, you know, I'd love to share my knowledge with you all.